All right, so uh, this is going to be a video that's going to cover the review for Chapter 3A test. Um, uh, these problems are going to be very similar to what you see on the test, so hopefully you guys find this video helpful. Um, if you need to, you can jump to specific parts that you need, um, but here we go. Um, so first two questions. Decide whether the function is a polynomial function. If so, state the type. Um, as for types, you can have a linear, a quadratic, um, a cubic, and a quartic. And those are the quar, uh, quar, yeah, quartic. So these are the four options that I'll have for the test. Obviously, there can be different types, but these are the ones. These are ones I'll cover. It's going to be a linear if the highest degree in the polynomial is degree one. So uh, that would be if this term right here was the highest degree, but it's not. So a uh, uh, quadratic would be it's if it's of degree two, and then cubic is of degree three, and quartic is of degree four. Um, so if you take a look at this polynomial, so decide if it's a polynomial to begin with. Remember that a polynomial function, it can't have um, like square root x. It can't have a square root over a variable. x cannot have a, ra uh, a rational or um, yeah, a rational exponent. x cannot have a negative exponent and x cannot be in the denominator. Those are some things that are not polynomials. So in this case right here, if you look at any term with an x, it doesn't um, uh, violate any of those rules, so we are good. This is a polynomial. Now this term has the highest degree, so that's going dictate, to uh, dictate the, the type. Um, and so in this case, since it's of degree 4, this one's going to be called a, this one's a quartic. Um, standard form just means that you have to write it in descending order of degree. So I would say f of x is equal to negative 3x to the fourth, and then plus 5x cubed, plus 6x squared, plus 2x minus 5. So you just order the terms in descending order depending on the degree. And so that's how you do that. State the degree in leading coefficient. So the degree in this case is 4. That's the largest degree. So 4 and the leading coefficient would be the coefficient of that term. So the leading coefficient there is negative 3. Uh, on to this next one. Decide if it's a polynomial. You can see here it violates one of our rules. So not a polynomial. So none of that is applicable. All right. Um, Okay, on to the next question. Describe the x values for which each function is increasing or decreasing. Um, so increasing, so as you're reading the graph from left to right, if you were to take your pencil and put it on the graph right here and move along the curve, if you're going up, then you are increasing. If you are going down as you move left to right, you are decreasing. So in this case right here, as we move left to right, initially we are increasing up until this value of x. So to the left of this value on the x-axis is when the y values are going to be increasing. So um, let's say for increasing, um, that we, I would say when x is less than negative 1. It just means to the left of negative 1, that's whenever it is increasing, if you are reading it left to right. And that means when x is greater than negative 1 is when it's decreasing. So decreasing, we'll say when x is greater than negative 1. B, when f of x is greater than 0. In other words, you can think of it like saying y is greater than 0. So when is this above the x-axis is basically what it's saying. So above the x-axis. Okay, so you can see on this graph right here, we're above the x-axis here. So that is between x values of negative 4 to 2. So I would write a compound inequality stating as such. So it is greater than 0 
when x is less than 2 but greater than negative 4. So it's a compound inequality because you're stating a range of values in between rather than on the ends. Okay, now that means on the other ends right here, so when x is less than 4 or greater than 2, that's when it is below the x-axis. So you can say, think about this as being below the x-axis. So that's going to be when x is um, less than negative 4 and when x is greater than 2. Greater than 2, less than 4, it's going to be below the x-axis. All right, uh, for the next one here, so increasing and decreasing. So increasing, that's whenever you're reading it left to right. So that would be right here. If you look at that x value, that's when x is greater than 3. So when x is greater than 3, that means it's decreasing when x is less than 3. Uh, for part b, um, above the x-axis, so there are two intervals where it's above the x-axis, right here and right here. So that's going to be when x is less than negative 1, as well as when x is greater than 7. And that means in between those values is where we are below the x-axis right here. We're below the x-axis between those values. I would write a compound inequality, so between 7 and negative 1. All right, simplify each expression. Um, I'm probably going to keep this quite uh, limited so uh, because these are generally easy problems. All you have to do is combine like terms. So let's start with this one right here. So we're going to add these two. So I have a 6m cubed, and in this other one I have a negative 6m cubed. So it's just about combining like terms. Those are going to cancel. Okay. We have, uh, let's see, we have 3 and we have negative 6. So if we can combine those together. That would be negative 3 because 3 minus 6 is negative 3. 7m to the 5th and then negative m to the 5th. Those are like terms because they have the same degree same variable too. So positive 7m minus 5m, that's going to give you positive 2m to the fifth. It does say to write your answer in standard form. So that would be that would be 2m to the fifth minus 3. So that's what you'll do in 7. You're just going to combine like terms. I'm going to jump over to 6. So for 6 right here, you are subtracting, you'll do the same in 8. So it's kind of similar, there's just one little thing you have to do. The, three, the negative has to be distributed to all terms. So you still have the negative 2m cubed plus 7m to the fourth plus 7m to the fifth. So the first polynomial will remain the same, but you gotta flip the signs of all other terms to the right. So plus 8m to the fourth, and now it's a game of just combining like terms. So we have 7m to the fifth and negative 5m to the fifth. So we'll say 2m to the fifth. We have, um, so those are out. We have 7m to the fourth, 8m to the fourth. Add those together, you get 15m to the fourth. Okay, so that's gone, that's gone, that's gone, that's gone. Then we got negative 3, uh, negative 2m cubed. Well, uh, those don't combine but they have nothing to combine with. So we'll just uh, write them in descending order, and there you go. Okay, um, so you'll do the same thing for 7, 8 with addition, subtraction. Really nothing too crazy there. Okay, to the next page, find each uh, product. So each product, um, uh, yeah, so this is just a FOIL method. You can use FOIL, you can use table method. I'm going to use FOIL. So 5a times by uh, 8a, so 5 times by 8 is going to be 40. So 40a times by a is a squared. 5a times by b is going to be plus 5ab. 4b times by 8b, so <clears throat> that's going to be equal to 32. 32ab, and then 4b times by b is going to be 4b squared. 
don't forget to combine like terms if you can. So 40, uh, 40 a squared plus 37 a b plus 4 b squared. Okay, um, on to the next one. Nothing really crazy here, but this is a, a pattern because they have the same um, same terms, just different sign, but you can still just use FOIA method. 4b times 4a times 4a is 16a squared. 4a times by 2b is 8ab. And then you'll do negative 2b times by 4a. If you uh, multiply those together, you'll get um, negative... 8ab and then negative 2b times positive 2b is minus 4b squared. You can see that those cancel out, so you get 16a squared minus 4b squared, and there you go. For the next one, same deal, I'm just going to FOIL. So 2n times by 8n squared, 16n to the third. Um, 2n times by 6n is going to be positive 12n squared. 2n times by negative 1 is negative 2n. Negative 7 times by 8n, I think that's going to be uh, 50, so negative 56n squared. So I'm going to put that right here so that I line up like terms. I'm going to stack them vertically. So negative 7 times by, by um, uh, 6n is going to be uh, negative 42 negative 42 n so I'm going to write that beneath this one right here because they're like terms negative 7 times negative 1 is positive 7 so when I add them I get 16 n cubed I got negative 56 plus 12 that's going to be negative 44 n squared I got negative 2 n and negative 42 n that's going to be negative 44 n and then plus 7 and there you go <laughs> Um, for the next one, um, I'm going to start by multiplying these two first, and then I'm going to multiply the product of that by x minus 1. So x times by 2x squared, that's 2x cubed. x times by 3 is 3x. Negative 7 times by 2x squared is negative 14x squared. Negative 7 times 3 is negative 21. So I have 2x cubed minus 14x squared plus 3x minus 21. I'm just going to write it in standard form and then I'm going to multiply this by x minus 1. So 2x cubed times by x, that's going to be 2x to the fourth. 2x cubed times by negative 1 is negative 2x cubed. Okay, and then negative 14x squared times by x is negative 14x cubed. Um, yeah, negative 14x squared times by negative 2 is positive 14x squared. 3x times by x is positive 3x squared. 3x times by negative 1 is negative 3x. Negative 21 times by x is negative 21x. Negative 21 times by negative 1 is plus 21. And now we just have to combine like terms. So all the like terms are grouped up right here, squared, squared, so on and so forth. So we're going to have 2x to the fourth minus 16x to the third plus 17x squared minus 24x plus 21. And there you go. Okay, so that's all just multiplying polynomials for this next one. Sketch the general shape of each function. Use a table and end behavior and describe the end behavior. So uh, as far as sketching goes, um, well, let's, uh, let's do the end behavior. So this is an odd degree. So this is uh, odd. And the leading coefficient is positive. So if you have an odd degree, leading coefficient is positive. It should take on the form, eh, that's kind of exaggerated, but should go down on the left side. It doesn't really happen uh, matter what happens in the middle, but then on the right side, it's going to go up. So this tells me as x approaches positive infinity, 
infinity. This means right. So on the right side, y. So on the right side, y is going up. So I'm going to put positive infinity here. OK. And then as x approaches negative infinity, that means on the left side. So on the left side, it's going down. So I'm going to say negative infinity there. Okay, um, let me go ahead and do this next one, this part really quick, because just I don't want to. Um, I just want to do these parts together. So for this one right here, we have um, the leading degree. It is an even degree, but the leading coefficient is negative. Okay, so that means on the left side it's going down, on the right side it's going down too. So this means the right side. So as x approaches infinity, that's right. As x approaches negative infinity, that's left. So either side, the y is going down, so y is approaching negative infinity. Um, really quickly on this next page, you have an odd degree and negative leading coefficient. So that's going to be the opposite from the one up here. So instead of going down on the left and up on the right, it's going to go up on the left and down on the right. So here, we should be, should be like this. And then going down, doesn't really matter what's happening in between. So this is on the right side. So as x approaches infinity, that's on the right side. That's going to be negative infinity. Right here, this is the left side. And that's going to be positive infinity. Here we have an even degree, and it's a positive leading coefficient. So that means it's going to be the opposite of what this one was. Both ends are going up. So it doesn't matter if it's on the right or the left. Y is going up, so Y is approaching positive infinity. Okay, now as for this part right here, um, you are just going to um, pretty much just plug in some values. So we have this function here. We know that on the left side it's going down, on the right side it's going up. So let's just plug in some values that are close to the uh, y-axis. So let's say we plug in 0. If I plug 0 into this term, it's going to go away because 0 cubed is 0. And then if I multiply that by 2, it's going to be 0. If I plug in 0 here, I get z uh, 3 times by 0. That's going to go away. So both those terms go away, leaving me with just positive 2. So right there is where I'd plot the point. Next thing I would do is plug in something like 1. And if you guys have your calculators, uh, plugging in 1 isn't uh, going to be that big of a deal. If you have the shortcut that I showed everybody uh, early on, that should make it easier. Um, I can remind you of that shortcut. Let me just pull up in my uh, calculator. Okay, so the thing about find, uh, using the shortcut is you have to use, I can't use a pointer here, but in the bottom left corner, there's this arrow button. You can see me pressing the arrow. You're going to need that button. So first thing, uh, what number was I going to use? So we're going to plug in 1. Okay, so we're going to plug in 1. We're going to say 1. Use the arrow button. It might say on your calculator something like STO. Um, so that's what you'll put in um, and then put in your variable mine's right here yours is probably going to be right above the storage button but you do that and then it remembers that X your variable button is the is going to be 1 so now I just have to type in the expression so 2x to the power of 3 and then minus um, 3x and then plus 2 and so I get an output of 1. So that means right here, I put a point at 1. All right, now the thing is, I know it's supposed to go up, but you see how we start going down. So at some point, it's going to have to move back up. Let's say I try and plug in 2. So now I'm going to plug in 2 into those spots right there. You can also just do this by hand. But let's say I do 2 stored as x. And many times, you can use the arrow buttons on your calculator to go back up to the same expression right here. Just click enter and enter again, and then it's going to recalculate. So it says that it's 12. Um, 
right? Yeah, that sounds right. So at 2, it's going to be 12, so it's going to be way up there. So I know for this side, it comes down like this and then goes up right there, so it's going to have to turn back up around. Okay, let's plug in something like negative 1. So I'm going to do negative 1, store that right here, go back up, enter, and enter, and I get 3. Okay, and then I'm going to plug in negative 2. So negative 2, store that in there. Go back up and copy down this expression, and we get negative 8. So that's going to be down there, so I know it has to go up and then down. Down to negative 8, and then that's, that's good enough right there. So, um, just for the sake of time, I'm going to keep going, um, because uh, I can help you with a couple of these. Um, uh, just remember that 0 is always the easiest to plug in. If I plug in 0, anything with an x is going to be gone. So your first point here is going to be at 4, and then again, just plug in 1 and 2, maybe 3. Just go as far as you can till you know that you're following the end behavior. So I know that I'm supposed to be going down. It might initially go up, but eventually it's going to have to go down. So um, yeah, you can take that for what it's worth. Um, but yeah, um, that's really all you have to do. Just plug in some values and go from there. Okay, um, a divide using long division. Um, okay, so long division. One thing that I will say is to always check for placeholders. Check for placeholders. And either one of the expressions. So. Here, where we have degree 5, and we have to be in standard form descending order. So 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and then none. So this doesn't need any placeholders. Um, and then we have x squared, and then work in descending order. It's 2, 1, nothing. So this expression doesn't need any placeholders either. It doesn't matter that this one's to the fifth and that one's squared. You don't need to pla put any placeholders to the left of the leading term. You only need placeholders if it's to the right of the leading term and it's missing. Okay, now for the setup. So we're going to underneath put the dividend. So 7x to the fifth minus 14x to the fourth minus 28x cubed minus 17. Um, x squared plus 30x plus 5. Okay, and then on the outside, we're going to put the divisor. Okay, and then first thing that you do is divide. Okay, you take the first term, divide it by the first term. So we're going to do 7x to the fifth divided by x squared. That's going to be 7x to the third. You just subtract these leading exponents right there. So 5 minus 2 is 3. 7 divided by 8, 1 is just going to be 7. And then that's what you're going to put above as the first part of your quotient. Okay, and then you can distribute. So 7x cubed. So um, the next part is to multiply. So divide first. Multiply. It's the next part. You multiply it to every term. So 7x cubed times by x squared is 7x to the fifth. Remember that I said that this should always be the same as the one up here. If it's not, then you're doing something wrong. You're not dividing the right way or something like that. Um, so 7x, uh, that's going to be that. That right there is going to be negative 21x to the fourth. Also, these should line up, x to the fourth and x to the fourth. That's the purpose of placeholders if you need them. Um, and then we'll have minus 7x cubed. Next thing that we're going to do is subtract. When I subtract, I have to flip the sign. So that's negative. So it's positive, so it's going to be negative. This one's going to be positive, and this one's going to be positive now. These are going to cancel. So then negative uh, 14x squared plus 21 or x to the fourth plus 21x to the fourth, that's going to be 7x to the fourth. And then we have negative uh, 28 plus 7, so that's going to be negative 21x to the third. And there you go. 
and then now we're gonna have to so we subtract and then next thing you do is bring down so we'll bring down the next term right there so we have negative 17 x squared if you want to bring down the other terms that's fine you might not use them but that's okay okay and then we're going to repeat the process so we're going to go back to divide um, so divide we're going to take this first term divide it by that first term so that's going to be 7x to the fourth divided by x squared and that's going to give you 7x squared so plus 7x squared and then next thing you're going to do is multiply take this and multiply it by all three terms so 7x squared by x squared is 7x to the fourth 7x squared times by negative 3x is going to be negative 21x uh, cubed 7 times by negative 1 is negative 7x squared then we're going to add, subtract them which means I flip the signs so those are going to cancel and they should always cancel if they're not canceling you're doing something wrong these don't have to cancel but in this case they will cancel um, and then we're going to have 17 x squared so that's going to be negative 10 x squared bring down the other terms okay and start the process over so we're going to do negative 10 x squared divided by x squared so negative 10 x squared divided by x squared that's just going to cancel out the x squareds and it's going to give you negative 10 so negative 10 is what's going to go here and then you distribute so negative 10 so it's going to give you negative 10 x squared uh, it's going to give you negative 30 x and it's going to give you plus 10 and then we are going to flip the signs and it's going to become negative those are going to cancel those are going to no those don't cancel uh, that's going to give you 60 x and then that's going to give you minus 5 and this is where you stop so your quotient ends with a constant or another or if you want to try it again so if you do 60 x divided by x squared the problem with this is that the degree in the numerator is uh, smaller than the degree in the denominator which doesn't really work out for polynomials because you can't have that in polynomials so um, that's how you know you've kind of reached the end okay so then your answer will be 7x cubed plus 7x squared minus 10 plus 60x minus 5 all over the divisor so that's x squared minus 3x minus 1 and there you go that's that okay let's give um, this one a go I'll probably stop after this one and make another video for the rest okay so here um, make sure we don't need placeholders we have 5 4 3 2 1 0 and then 1 and 0 so we're good um, all right I'll go I'm probably gonna do this one a little bit more quickly okay I'm also probably gonna move this over here give myself more room okay so we have 4x plus 3 we have 20x to the fifth plus 7x to the fourth plus 22x cubed minus 11x squared minus 4x plus 13 I think I got everything correct when I copied it down okay so I'll do 20x to the fifth divide that by 4x so 20 divided by 4 is going to be 5 and then x to the fifth divided by x is x to the fourth so 5x to the fourth Okay, so this divided uh, times by that, that's going to give you 20x to the fifth. And then 5x to the fourth times by 3 is going to be plus 15x um, to the fourth. I subtract them by flipping their signs. Those are going to cancel. And then I'm going to get um, is that negative 8x to the fourth, I believe. Okay, and then you're going to repeat the process. Um, Okay, you can bring uh, this down right here, so plus 22x to the third, so negative 8x to the fourth divided by 4x, so just first term divided by first term, that's going to be negative 2x to the third, 
So negative 2x to the, uh, whoops, nope. I'm going to take this and multiply it by both terms out here. So it's going to give you negative 8x to the fourth, and then minus 6x to the third. Flip the signs, and then those are going to cancel. And 22 and 6 is going to give me 28x to the third. Bring down, so it's negative 11x squared. And then I'm going to do first term divided by first term. So 28x to the third divided by 4x. That's going to give you, um, 28 divided by 4 is going to be 7. So it's going to be 7x squared so plus 7x squared. You're going to multiply. So 7x squared times 4x is 28x uh, cubed. 7x squared times by 3 is plus 21x squared. We are going to flip the signs. So the first two are going to cancel. We get negative 21 and then negative 11. That's going to be negative 32x squared. Bring down the next term. And then I'm going to do negative 32x squared divided by 4x. So 32 divided by 4 is going to give you um, 8. So 8x. So plus 8x. I'm going to distribute that. So 8x times by 4x is... Um, uh, that should be negative. So that means this one should be negative right here. Negative 8x. Okay, it's going to give you negative 32x squared. Um, whoops, I meant to bring this down here. So minus 4x. And then negative 8x times by 3. It's going to give you negative 24x. We're going to add them together. So plus, and uh, we're going to subtract them. So flip the signs. First, they're going to cancel. That's going to give you 20x. Bring this down. So we got uh, plus 13. Finally, we'll do 20x divided by 4x. And that's going to give you 5. So plus 5. And then it'll distribute the 5. So 5 times by 4x is 20x. 5 times by that's going to give you 15. Subtract them and flip their signs. So you're going to get a remainder of negative 2. So your answer is going to be all of this. And then you're going to do plus the negative 2 divided by 4x plus 3. Okay, that was a long one. Um, all right, as for the rest, I am going to do that all in a second video. So make sure to look out for the second part.